Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, if you've watched my videos about VPNs or about encryption, you'll have noticed that I've said several times that we must be careful when using public open Wi-Fi hotspots. Now, the reason for that is because the information, the data that's sent from your smartphone or from your laptop to the access point is actually broadcast in every direction for anybody to collect and to, to analyze. And so therefore that obviously poses a whole bunch of different problems. But the question is how easy is it to actually collect data, collect network packets on a public open Wi-Fi system? Well, let me explain. So when you connect to a public open Wi-Fi, the connection between your device and the Wi-Fi router is in the clear, it's not encrypted. And that's because people want you to connect to it, to use it while you're in their shopping mall or in their uh, coffee shop, for example. And therefore the data that's sent is completely open. And as I said a moment ago, it's sent in every direction. It's not just sent kind of like directly in the line of sight of the router. And if you have a, the right equipment, anybody can pick up all those data packets that are floating around in the air. Now, normally a, a Wi-Fi adapter, whether it's one for uh, in, built into your laptop, built into your phone, or one that you use through USB, is in what they call managed mode. And that basically means it just wants to talk to a Wi-Fi hotspot, it wants to send and receive data, and it's not really interested in anything else that's going on. However, the Wi-Fi standard allows these chipsets to be put into several other modes, and one of them is called monitor mode. Now, in monitor mode, the Wi-Fi chipset can actually pick up and receive the packets that are going anywhere in the air, whether they're going to the guy on the table next to you, whether they're going to the guy who's down the shopping mall a little bit, you can receive all of them because Wi-Fi signals are pervasive. They go absolutely everywhere when they are sent out. Now, not all Wi-Fi chipsets can do this. It's cheaper just to make a Wi-Fi chipset that just sticks in managed mode because the firmware and the hardware logic is much simpler. And that's actually the kind of the 99% use case that people just want to connect to a hotspot and to send and receive traffic. However, if you get your hands on the right piece of equipment, then actually you can put it into monitor mode. Now, for example, I have here a uh, dongle that I bought from Amazon. You can get it for under $20. Uh, it's by TP-Link and it actually has the right drivers that you can set this thing into monitor mode. Now to do this, you're going to need a thing called uh, Kali Linux. It's a special Linux distribution, but you don't have to install it on a laptop and then kind of over install Windows or anything like that. You can run it as a virtual machine. And if you run it as a virtual machine, you can then plug in the USB adapter and you can actually associate it with the uh, Linux distribution and it's like you're running on a separate machine virtual machine. Now I've done some testing using my laptop and using my a virtual machine for Kali Linux and everything I'm going to tell you now is actually what I've done myself and step by step I've actually proved that this works. Now rather than give you all the actual commands here during the video which will be hard for you to follow, go over to the andrewauthority.com website and look at the article that goes to this video because there I've listed all the commands that you need and they're easy there for you to cut and paste and to read and to study to see what I'm doing. But basically, you first of all, you boot up Kali Linux and then you plug in your USB adapter, you make sure it can be seen and then you switch the adapter into monitor mode and you use some tools from the Aircrack suite to do that. And then once you've found the Wi-Fi network that you want to listen to, you then basically just say to the Aircrack suite, use this Wi-Fi adapter to just capture all the packets that are going around in the air, and they will be captured onto your hard disk. And then once they're on your hard disk, you can use tools like DriftNet and Wireshark to examine all of that data and see what's there. Now, very quickly, you'll be able to grab out some URLs so you can see what websites people have been visiting. And you'll also be able to grab any pictures that have been flowing around in the air to see what people have been viewing. Now to test this, I put my own Wi-Fi hotspot here in my house. It was completely open, so maybe for a few days my neighbors were able to get a bit of free internet access, but I'm sure they've all got internet access anyway. And uh, basically I use one laptop connected to that Wi-Fi hotspot, and I use my Android phone connected to that hotspot, and then I use my laptop running 
Kali Linux along with this Wi-Fi adapter and I just captured all of the stuff that was going out and you can actually find that you can pretty get hold of a lot of information. Particularly, for example, I went to a particular football website, soccer for those in North America, and all the player pictures that I was downloading and looking at, I've now grabbed from uh, the Wi-Fi dongle and it's actually, I've got it stored on my hard drive and I wasn't even connected to the same Wi-Fi router. That's the beauty of monitor mode. You can actually just grab things out of the air as they're, they're whizzing past. Now, obviously, if this was the case for absolutely everything, it would be a disaster. Every email you read, every time you went somewhere to um, instant messaging, everything would be open. Now, thankfully, there is this thing called HTTPS. You've probably seen it when you type in a URL. And when you go to a website that's using HTTPS, you'll see that little padlock sign. Now, the S and the padlock sign are showing that this is secure. It's an encrypted connection. So even if the packets are flowing around in the air freely between your device and the Wi-Fi hotspot, once those packets have been grabbed from the air, if you have a look inside of them, it's all gobbledygook because it's encrypted and you can't see what's in there. So all the pictures are encrypted, all the URLs are encrypted, all your emails are encrypted and so on. And that's great. Now, the number of websites that use HTTPS now is, has increased a lot and that's thanks to projects like the Let's uh, Encrypt project and also the free availability of, or the relatively free availability of SSL certificates. Now, what that means is that when you connect to a website, and Google, for example, for their search and for everything that you do on Google, including Gmail, it's all over HTTPS. So whatever you're reading on Google, whatever you're searching on Google can't be seen when you're on a public free uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. However, many sites only use HTTPS when you're doing the login, so at least your password's protected, and when you're doing the kind of the checkout with what you've purchased, if it's a, a commercial site. So that's covered as well. But in between time, when you're browsing all the different products, they are freely available because they're in the clear. However, that's changing and Google have a report card available, which kind of gives you a list of all of the sites that use HTTPS from end to end. So things are really improving on the web browser front. And of course, you've got that little icon that tells you whether you're connected securely. However, things aren't quite as simple when it comes to Android apps. Whenever you use an Android app and it's getting data, it might be getting advert data, it might be sending some personal profile data about you, you might be using a network service, whether it be social media, whether it be instant messaging or whether it may be multiplayer gaming, whatever you're doing, you don't know whether that connection is an encrypted connection. And that's because there is no little padlock sign, there is no little green sign to tell you that everything's going okay, you just have to trust that app. And not all apps, by any measure, use encryption during the networking part of their design. Now, unfortunately, there's no easy way of telling which apps do and which apps don't. You actually have to sit down with a, uh, a Wi-Fi adapter like I've got and start to monitor this traffic and see what's available. And that's obviously time consuming. Now, some people have written reports about this and they are out there to find. However, it's really a problem. We can't find out quickly whether an app uses encryption or not. Now, if we take an app like WhatsApp, they have declared publicly, and it even says so in the app, that everything that you do over WhatsApp is encrypted. So even if I'm using it on a public Wi-Fi hotspot, then it will be encrypted. It doesn't matter if someone grabs all those packets out of the air, you can't see what's inside of them. However, other apps like Get Google's Allo Messenger has clearly stated it doesn't use encryption only when you're in incognito mode. Now, I haven't tested it to see how bad that situation really is, but but it is interesting that even popular uh, apps by big companies aren't necessarily using encryption. So do be careful when you're using an app on your phone, be sure that you're 100% you know that it's using encryption, otherwise it could be stolen when you're connected to a Wi-Fi hotspot. Now, grabbing things out of the air is one thing that can happen on a Wi-Fi hotspot, but it's not the only thing that can happen on a Wi-Fi hotspot. Another problem can be is people can set up rogue access points, fake access points, deliberately just to lure you in so that you connect to them and then they have control over your traffic. So for example, maybe you go to a particular coffee shop and it doesn't have Wi-Fi and then one day you see that it does. You go, oh great, the shop's got Wi-Fi. I'm so happy I've wanted them to have Wi-Fi for a long time. And actually it's not. There's a guy two tables down with his laptop and with a Wi-Fi adapter like the one that I've got and he set up his own access point. All the tools for that are available on Linux distributions like Kali Linux that I mentioned earlier on. And then what happens is everything that you send to the internet actually goes to his laptop first where he can store it and he can also manipulate it and worst of all, he can redirect it. So you think you're going to amazon.com and 
And in fact, what comes up is a website that looks very similar. In fact, it's a clone of Amazon.com, but really it's a fake website that he put up deliberately just to capture your login password. So you then go and log in, it says login failed, and then it will probably redirect you to the real website where you log in and go, oh, I must have typed in the password wrong. But actually, you've now given him your username and password. So that's a danger of using uh, untrusted Wi-Fi access points. And that's the problem. When you go to a shopping mall, there might be like 10, 20, 30, 40 different Wi-Fi networks listed, okay? And some of them are open, some of them are not. And they all look legitimate because they're all names of the shops that are around you. And you think, oh, well, I'll connect to the Starbucks network, I'll connect to, the, to whatever network. And actually, there could be a guy sitting on the bench behind you who set up that Wi-Fi network. So be careful. And there's a third thing that can happen when you connect to public Wi-Fi, and that is a thing called ARP spoofing. Now, every single network card in the world has a thing called a MAC address. Even this thing has a MAC address, and that's the media access control address. And it's unique. They're established in the factory when it goes out of the door, and everyone in the world is different. Whether it's a PC, whether it's a laptop, whether it's a, an adapter like this, whether it's your smartphone, they've all got these uh, unique uh, addresses on them. And what happens is when you have an IP address, that's to the internet address, what happens is that another PC or another device says, hey, who owns this address? And it uses the ARP, the address resolution protocol, to say who owns it, and then it says I do, and the MAC address is sent back. And now in a normal secure environment, that's absolutely perfect, and that's how it works. But actually, when you're on an open public Wi-Fi, you can spoof that. So someone comes along and says, hey, who owns this address? And you say, I do, but you don't. <laughs> you don't own it at all, but you lie. You get your PC to lie about the fact that it owns the address. And that means now traffic that was gonna go to one place, probably the router, now comes to you. And once it comes to you, again, you can then do lots of different things like phishing attacks, man in the middle attacks. You can actually set it up so that all the data is restored on you and then you redirect it to somewhere else. If they're going somewhere simple, like a news website, you just redirect them. If they're going to somewhere that you're interested in their passwords, PayPal, eBay, Amazon, whatever, then you can send them over to a fake site and try to do a phishing attack on them to try to capture their username and password. So there's three things that can happen. You can capture the packets out of the air uh, using monitor mode on the Wi-Fi adapter. You can set up a fake Wi-Fi hotspot to lure people in and then to capture their information. And ARP spoofing allows people on open Wi-Fi networks to redirect traffic and you really don't are not even none the wiser about what's going on. And then with web browsers, we must be careful that we're using HTTPS, that you've got that sign up there on the uh, padlock sign, the little green box saying everything is okay. But on Android apps, it's much harder to know whether the app is using SSL or not. So be careful, unless it's something like WhatsApp or other apps that have declared publicly that they're using encryption, be careful when using those apps over a, uh, an open network. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want the tutorial about how to do these things, the exact commands you need to type into Kali Linux to replicate what I've been doing, go over to the androidauthority.com website and find the written article. It's got all of the things listed for you there. Don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Don't forget to download our Android Authority app because that will give you access to all of our latest news directly on your mobile phone. And don't forget daily, you should go to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.